And then John Lennon ate all the acid in the bowl. Oh, hello. Thanks for joining me here at the Guitar Colonel Log Cabin, deep in the Victorian wilderness. We're just reminiscing about some old rock stories. And uh, speaking of uh, reminiscing and acid, a young man who is the Swiss army knife of Australian music, Australian guitar, Davy Lane popped in to see us. Do you remember when Davy came in? And boy oh boy is he a talented son of a bitch. And he sat with us here in the log cabin and uh, told us about his music and his guitars and all things classic Oz rock. It was great. Let's reminisce. Do you remember when Davy came in? Did he give us the acid? Do you remember? Do we... Hello. I'm here with Davy Lane. Woo! Hello. How are you? I'm bloody lovely thank thanks for having me that's all right thanks for coming in we've tried uh for a long time for a long you time in. you're very yeah. busy with things with things and also um having recently moved to the south side of the river it's How? been um now i'm you know only a, a mere stone's throw from you it's yeah. been uh, a well, lot to easier a, to uh it was a three hour drive from northcote previously exactly yeah yeah just on the, the corner. Uh, on the dark side of town. Cool, man. Well, I know you're busy. You're sort of playing for everybody and doing your solo stuff. And yeah, it's enough it's to un- keep me in and out of trouble. Yeah, it's an unbelievable list. Now, Davey. Yes. Let's go back to where it all began. Sure. How did you get into guitar? Um, I, well, I guess kind of early on, I was, you know, I was, uh, my dad was into before the rock and roll bug bit. Yes. My dad was also into kind of big band music. Okay. Well, so a bit of there was a lot of kind of Glenn Miller and um, Benny Goodman being played around the house. So um, I thought initially it would be a good idea to play the trombone. Yes. So I started learning the trombone. Uh, with uh, with not a great deal of success, mm-hmm. but it was around that time that the uh, the the rock and roll music bug bit me. We're talking talking eighties. Uh, we're talking. Uh, this would have been. I probably would have been about s- seven or eight. I reckon. So this would have been. Yeah, late. Maybe. End of the 80s. Cool. Um, did they send you for, did you go get guitar lessons or anything? Or? Uh, I didn't get guitar lessons till quite a bit later on, but I, um, when I started high school, probably around 13, 14, I, was, I, I had a few guitar lessons. But I, um, yeah, I mean, I guess like my, my dad brought home a VHS video of the, the Who um, oh, right. documentary the yeah. kids are all right and uh, as soon as I saw Pete Townsend playing guitar like doing giving it all that and so and all all of that <laughs> I thought I want to do that I want to do that and and that so um, you made it very attractive for young people absolutely and for you know for me as a kind of like as a you know geeky little kid who was not um, terribly great at expressing oneself. I thought, mm. well, there's there's your form of expression right there. Yeah. So I hear a lot of uh, the who in your music. So I've been listening to your most recent album. Yeah, and it kind of sounds like the who meets Tears for Fears, sort of almost. Oh, like right. A bit of, uh, quite an '80s influence. There. Yeah, there's like a, '60s and '80s. There's a little, yeah, there's a bit of '80s stuff, and I, I think the kind of 80s pop influence that creeps in is is um, I think uh, like, yeah uh, more more than not it's a result of like what I was listening to growing up yeah, yeah. and um, you know I, I, I'm as much as uh, I'm spo- I guess you know you're supposed to be a rock and roll purist but like yeah. but I'm I'm not at all and um, you know, a good song is a good song, no matter how it's dressed up. Yeah, so, yeah. It's a little uh, bit, it kind of sounds a bit like Tame Impala, but like a, a more melodic version of Tame Impala. Right. Impala I think. Yeah. I like well, I, I've, 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 I've spoken to a few people who have met, who've mentioned the same kind of thing, and um, Tame Impala are amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
uh, I, th- I think it's it's probably, I reckon, um, and I got to tour with him the end of last year. Oh right, um, Todd Rundgren, from yes. who's a, a like in in my mind is like he's a musical genius up there with your Brian Wilsons and your yes. McCartneys and all that kind of stuff, um, and I know that Kevin because I've spoken to him about it. He's a massive Todd Rundgren nut as well. Yeah. And I think like a lot of those weird kind of chords, like the, um, like you kind of, you, you kind of chords with like odd bass notes, like yeah, you, yeah, you'd yeah. have a D chord, but with a G bass yeah. or. So a yeah. lot of those chords, which are, I think used in a lot of Tame Impala's yeah. music as well, yeah, come yeah. from. Todd Rundgren and um, a lot of slash chords and slash chords. That's it. Yeah, yeah. different yeah. notes in the bass. That's, that's cool. Yeah. So how did you? I was going to ask you about the Todd Rundgren, mm. and I called him the Todd Rundgren. The Todd. <laughs> well, I think that's his uh, Instagram handle. If you uh, look him up on the Instagram, the Instagram, I think he's the Todd mm. Rundgren. How did you get the Todd Rundgren gig? How did that come about? Uh, I got a call from a chap from Perth named Gavin who was putting together a a fan meet for Todd uh, in Sydney yes. end of last year and he kind of floated the idea he knew that I was a fan of Todd so he floated the idea of me putting a band together for basically the um, this fan meet was like three or four days and yeah. basically the idea was to put a band together for the end of fan meet piss up you know yeah. so um, so I thought well if we're going to put a band together and learn a set's worth of Todd Rundgren songs which are not you know they're, they're not 12 yeah. bar blues no. yeah. there's a lot of chords Difficult. in them and a lot of like, odd time signatures and a lot of weird kind of like har- harmony things going on so I thought that it'd be uh, if we're going to put the work together to, to learn a set's worth of his tunes we may as well do a few extra shows so I got in touch with um, my booker who books my my own solo shows and we put a little run together and like floated it with Todd and he was like yeah sounds all right so yeah that was that was it basically he That's came cool. out and did the fan meet flew Amazing. to Melbourne we got into a rehearsal room with them, and how, it was like, how uh, soon before the gig did you have a rehearsal? We uh, the the band without Todd, prob- we probably had three or four rehearsals without him, just to kind of get everything up to speed because yeah. we wanted Todd to be able to walk in and basically just sing the songs yeah. and not have to worry about anything. So uh, we had we had. I think a total of like maybe four hours rehearsal with him. So it was like, you know, for a, for a 90 minute set, it was yeah. kind of like a pretty tight, um, That's, pretty tight yeah, turnaround. Yeah, very tight timeline. But, um, but we, we, yeah, we got there in the end and he was, he was really great to tour with. He had, you know, the, the, that guy's seen a lot of shit yeah, and yeah, he's, yeah. he's done a lot of shit. Yeah. And, um, Famous producer. Or yeah, or yeah. Yeah. He's produced. That's amazing. You know, like I oh know we we talk about XTC, XTC and like, yeah. he did one of their great records, Skylarking, and um, yeah. But he's uh, he's you know, it's nice to uh, hang out with well, yeah, hang out with someone whose music you admire so much, and he's you know he's just a, a pretty laid back kind of guy, and for a guy with a genius level IQ, he's not above toilet humour, yeah. which is refreshing. <laughs> Cool. Well, yeah. uh, you tend to find these amazing gigs, Davey. For someone out there who's young and looking, going, how does he, how did he get these gigs? Like you, Jimmy Barnes. Mm. You're probably most known for being in UMI. Yeah, well, that's my day some, job. That's the day job. Crowded House. Yep, I the, did that the for The list a goes on. So I, I heard a story that to get the UMI gig, you, ta- you used to be a tabber and you tabbed their songs that's online just, yeah. and they contacted you is that is that true yeah well uh, it, uh, um a friend of mine was doing their website or it wasn't i don't think it was their website it was like a fan site yep. like in the days before facebook groups yeah um 
everyone had a geocities.com <laughs> fan site. So uh, a friend of mine was doing uh, a site for them and uh, I remember looking up the guitar tab section and it's that classic thing of like, you. Oh, how do you play that? And you okay, type it in and then you go and look for it. And it's like, wait a minute, that's fucking, that's, that's not right. That's not right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's wrong. So um, in my school holidays to fill in time, I thought I'd, I'd have a crack at it myself. And I just, it's, it's one of those, it's like, I'm, all, I'm always quite, I'm always very tunnel visioned about anything, whether it's like, anything in my life if I if I you know I'm focused on it then that's like that's um, 100% you know yeah, I'm gonna get it done. focus and that and they they saw that and they contacted you and said come and have a jam or something or? yeah well it was yeah it was it was uh, they were doing shows where they'd get uh, like a fan up on stage to play guitar for one song right so I got to do that in Melbourne and we played the one song that we were going to play, and then Tim leaned in my ear and goes, "Do you know how to play Kathy's Clown?" So, yeah, yep. Yeah. Played Kathy's Clown, and so, "Do you know how to play Rumble?" So, yeah, I know how to play Rumble. <laughs> so it ended up I kind of did four or five songs with them, and and that's that's how it all started, really. That's amazing. That's and very then cool. They went on tour for three months, and I finished high school and. Uh, had my holidays and then started uh, started university. Yeah. I was doing a um, a journalism course, and a day into it, I thought this is not for me. I'm, I, I I fucking hate this. I, this is <laughs> I'm doing this for my parents because yes. yep. that's what they want me to do. But Keep them this is not me. Mm. So then, at the end of the second day, I. I'm at home and the phone rings and I pick it up and it's and it's Tim. He goes, oh, I'm putting a band together for I'm putting a solo record out and I'm oh, putting wow. a band together and so like, and I'd like to have a second guitar player. Would you be up for doing that? And so, yes, of course yes. I would. <laughs> so allow I allow myself to introduce myself. Allow myself yes. to introduce <laughs> What, 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 what is that from? That's that is from Austin Powers. Austin Powers, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, so I did that and, uh, uh, yeah, I did, did that tour with Tim. And then after that, we had a little break. And then it kind of, the idea was floated that I'd maybe um, do a rehearsal with you on mine and see how it goes. So, and that was that. And Were you nervous? I was very nervous. I was, I was like, I, well, yeah, my default setting was nervous <laughs> at, the, at that point. Yeah. It still is from time to time. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I was, in fact, the first gig I was, uh, cause T Tim uses Tone Masters and he gets that really nice kind of like um, half overdriven kind of clangy kind of sound and... I had no idea about amps or pedals or like I'd, I'd played in the, um, you know, I'd played, the only gigs I'd ever played before that were in the school quad, quadrangle at, at lunchtime and... Um, PV Rage. Exactly, PV Rage, <laughs> uh, Samic, um, with my Samic 335. That's cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, and I was using a Fender Twin, which was kind of like, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just drive this and it's like well fender twins are fucking loud amps super loud yeah. so uh i um kind of found the more mistakes i made i'd kind of dial the amp back so i think by the end of the show i don't think my amp was actually on i think i'd like <laughs> um, were you using any pedals or uh i can't remember yeah I, I, I would have been using like some sort of overdrive and maybe a uh Probably at the time, like these old like blue Digitech kind of things that sort of did a Leslie sound, but yep. like probably in retrospect didn't sound anything like a Leslie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever own a real Leslie? No. Crab, nothing. That's one, one that I'd like to tick off at yeah. some point. <laughs>
If, yeah. if you are knocking at the door at the moment, uh, I'm here with Panda and Dave. I'll open the door later. There we go. Key them. <laughs> Might cut that. Um, <laughs> cool, man. Now, what sort of guitars were you using initially? Because you brought then? a few in. Were you using any of these back then? No, these are most of these. Well, yeah, these are all kind of things that I've acquired in the last five or so years. But right. um, back then, I had a tele. I was using a tele thin line that. Um, Tim had sort of like passed down to me from Tim. Yeah. So that was my first proper guitar that I, I used with UMI. Yeah. And then I had a couple of different tellies. Like I had like a Mexican kind of, just a, you know, straight off the shelf kind of telly deluxe that I was using for a bit. And um, an SG, which I still have, which is like the, Coming full circle, it was the Pete yeah. Townsend yeah. signature SG yeah. with the P90. So uh, I saw you playing, I think, uh, a Tele Custom at one point. Did I see you on yeah. ABC? Yeah, or like a 74 or something. That's right. Yep, yep. What happened to that? Yep. I think that's, that's somewhere in the um, recesses of the UMI band lockup, mm. I think. I think oh, it's so still got it. I think it's still there, yeah. Oh, wow. Now, what are you playing today? Today? A Davey Backer. Yeah. I might switch cameras and we can have a no look. No worries. This. Looks quite amazing. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a um dun, 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 dun. It's not a Rickenbacker. It's a uh Davy Backer. It's a Davy <laughs> Backer. So if Rickenbacker want to come and That was uh, probably them knocking on the door before. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could smell it. it, it yeah. yeah. They uh they uh notoriously litigious. Yes. So um, they are. We've, we've this is a guitar before. that I got made, custom made in China. Yes. And uh, you know, I don't. I don't usually condone pir piracy, but if yeah. if Rickenbacker were to reissue a 360 Capri, yes, uh, you'd, you'd, like a 58 style, then I'll, yeah. I'll I'll buy one. Yes. But until they do, this will China. This will do. yeah yeah. Hello, so I so oh, I got nice this um, I got this it was and it was you know it was uh, not not an expensive guitar yes. but I put uh, Lola uh, broiler pickups I think they're, okay. they're like the Lola um, Rickenbacker toaster pickups right um, replace the pickups replace the electronics. Um, I think I'd bought a trapeze tail piece. Yeah, I did buy that tail piece. But um, the bridge and the, the tuners are as as per I got them. Yep. And um, they've done it, a great job. Yeah, it I mean looks, it's it looks legit. It, it's it's one of those things. It looks legit, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's one of those things. It's kind of um, I thought, well, you know, if if I take a chance and if I get it back and it's 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 a pile of shit then um, I haven't you know wasted it's a, not yeah. an incredible it's amount of money I've still got something that looks nice that I can pop on me wall that's cool so yeah, but lo wonderful. lo and behold it's a, yeah it, it, it I, I use it I use it um, it's one of my main UMI guitars now right. so that's very cool and uh, we might have a look at your pedal board you've been nice enough to bring in the board yep Let's have a look. We're so we're running into the Fender Blues Deluxe today. Yeah, so this is what I've been running over the last few weeks. Yes. And um, it may be uh, shattering a uh, shattering a myth yes. by uh, the inclusion of, of this here. Uh, that's an, um, that is an Axe FX, folks. The purest, Fractal. the purest in me, still. Not balks, but yeah. uh, the purest. In, uh, but the thing is, like, I, I guess, like, that purest mentality of, of um, you know, you can't use something like that is yeah. probably more uh, born from peer pressure than yeah. than what I actually um, think myself. But I've been using that this a little bit lately, and. So this is, I've only ever seen this as a rack. Unit. Right. So this is the floor stomper version. Yeah. So 
you go directly into now today you're not using it because no. we're just using the pedals i might just yeah. quickly go through the pedals and we'll come back so you've got a what's that a mel a mel nine. it's an electro harmonics mel 9 which uh, oh, i find it. really yeah, useful for umi yeah because we um there are quite a few songs on like high for way and hourly daily that use mellotron so oh wait a minute no that's not um ah i had the uh Got the wrong, it's plugged in the wrong oh, uh, you need output. Help? It's in the dry output, so. Dum da da da. Dum da da da. Oh. Wow. That is spooky. Oh, it's almost, the, oh, there we go, yeah, it's the Beatles. Yep, well, that's it. That's yeah. the, uh, and if you go number four onto the flutes. Who needs a keyboard player? Oh man, <laughs> keyboard players are so overrated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nothing but trouble as well. They're nothing but trouble. And you've I got... Can tell, I can tell you that from experience. <laughs> a micropog? Um, polyphonic... Yeah, pog. yeah, it's a, it's a micropog. Um, That's great. And I use that for kind of... There are a few songs in. I mainly, yeah, more for my own solo, um, my own solo stuff that I do. I kind of tend to use that, but I've used it with you on my own occasion. Um, and a pitchfork. Yeah. Well, I've, I actually, I use that as a. I mean, it does a kind of reasonable kind of like yeah. pitch shift kind of chorus, yeah. but I. Right. I use actually. If I, there are a couple of songs that I do here or there that have um, that are like one step down tuning, and so I basically use it for that just to tune down a step. Right. That's cool. So that's so you, you're in. Uh, you're in D there, or E flat? In D, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And that's amazing. Yeah, the, the the tracking is is pretty incredible. For that's really good. You know, when you think of like your your older octave pedals that kind of couldn't ha really handle more than one note yeah, at a time. Yeah. It's it. It's, all over the place. it's pretty handy. That's so. cool. So with the so you're normally using those four, and you'll go into yeah. the the fractal. Yeah. And then that goes out into a PA system. That's right. Today yeah. we're not doing that. We're going into no. the amp. So we we bypass the fractal. But, no. Um, I mean, I've only I'm still kind of I'm still kind of getting the handle on this this fractal thing. I actually bought it for for Todd Rundgren to use because right. he wanted to use a straight in kind of thing. I was like, oh, okay, really? All right, that's fine. So. I got that, and he he started using it, and um, I, uh, I yeah I hung on to it after after we went back home. That's so cool. um, I just started mucking around with it, and I don't know. I think this sort of technology has come such a long yes. way, in the especially yeah. in the last few years, you can do something. Um, you know, for, for me, kind of you know, as a fan of your classic classic kind of guitar tones it kind the rock of the classic it gets you the way there it gets you like all you know 99 percent of the way there and um well with umi we've been doing a lot of uh you know open air festivals over the last couple of months so with a different back line you kind of don't really know what you're going to get from show to show so yes, yeah. in terms of consistency of sound then this kind of is a, is a great help but yes. I um I use a few different uh, when I'm when I'm using my my proper board in into an amp I use a uh, a few different pedals um, I use a few different drives. There's a a, a company called Moztronics who yes. are from Melbourne who uh, they make a bunch of different drives that are really good and I use their fuzz as well. There you go. Shout um, out to Moztronics. Moztronics, yeah, yeah. So We recommend them. Well, yes. Does. 
Yes. I will recommend them if you send me some. Uh, yes. Yeah. Try. <laughs> I'm sure he would be uh, more than obliging to uh, to do that. Now, Davey, you brought some more guitars in. Can I have. have. a look at, maybe do a guitar change. Yep. If you uh, are watching and you're wondering if the dog is alive, it, it is. It Hello, is, mate. Yeah, it's not a, it's, it's a real dog. That's Panda. Hello, Panda. I, I, I thought the um, fractal sounded great last night. Ah, uh, yeah. Using a Gibson Les Paul. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Um, I went to see uh, Davey at the SB last night and I had to go home early because there was uh, some trouble with Panda tearing up the joint, but... Ah. Uh, uh, you certainly couldn't tell it was a it, it was well, anything but a you know it sounded le legit it sounded well, that's, real so. that's the yeah that's the idea i mean if it if it if i couldn't get it to uh yeah if it didn't sound right then i obviously if it didn't sound right then i wouldn't be using it would that's i that's right so uh that sounded yeah kind of well that's good tough to, noise yeah. there. <laughs> if it's not right you can go away and have a bite you'll still be <laughs> still be hearing that still be Looking at it. Yeah. Uh, so now, this got? there's an interesting yeah. story behind this. Mm. This is a uh, that looks like a Brian, uh, Brian May's. It, it indeed is a Brian May um, replica of his Red Special. Mm. Um, wow! Is that his signature on the side? That indeed is. Mm. Oh my God! The great man's signature wow. on the side there. Look at that, folks. That's him. The real McCoy. Yep. Mm. Um, I built this with uh, under the guidance of a couple of um, uh, a couple of amazing local luthiers yes first of all I um, I mean I'd always been a big queen fan since I was a little knee high to a little knee high to a grasshopper yes and um, grasshopper I thought that um, I was I was always just intrigued by you know Brian May's innovation with how he like you know like how he built, how he orchestrated things and mm. and kind of you know it, it's uh, you know he's got a fantastic sound. I mean yeah, as, as well as being a, a super an ast player, ast yeah, and ast an astrophysicist and an astrophysicist and a doctorate of mathematics, <laughs> um, just in his spare time. Yeah, bloody overachievers. <laughs> um, so I got in touch. So this, this is this is a this is a parts. Uh, you bought yeah. the parts of this and assembled it yourself. Yeah, that, from yep. f in Australia. Yep, yep. Wow. Um, I got in touch with uh, a luthier in Sydney named um, uh, Greg Fryer, right? Who uh, makes he makes amazing Stratocasters. Okay. Um, he makes Strats for uh, he's made, it, actually Ian Moss plays a few of his okay. Strats. Wow! And he's he's his attention to detail is. Unlike unlike anything I've, yes. e I've ever seen, he builds amazing guitars, and he was uh, probably about twenty years ago now. He was entrusted by Brian May to restore his original Red wow. Special. That's very cool. Um, but before he did that, he um, he went over to England and examined the original guitar to a T. Uh, I hope Measure I'm getting, getting this thing. right, like measurements and kind of like x-rayed to see, you know, for, for cavities and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and took those, took all that information home and built uh, three uh, replicas for Brian May. Yes. I was going to say identical replicas, but they're not because each of them had subtle differences. Yeah. But he, he had built, and I only found out this after I'd kind of done a, done a little bit of back and forth over email with him, but he um, he had a um, he built these built three replicas for Brian, but yeah. he had as a backup just in case something went wrong with the three he was building at the time. He had a half finished body yeah. and a blank for a neck. Um, so he got back in touch with me and said, well, look, I've kind of had this lying around and it's just been sitting in my workshop for 20 years. Wow. Um, he goes, well, if, if you're going to build this and you're going to use it on, you know, use it as a musician would use it, like take it on tour. And, yeah. and he goes, well, I'd be like, happy to, you know. And he, gave, he, he I bought, I 
bought the parts off him, but for, you know, for, for what it is, a ridiculous price. But, um, but he, yeah, I mean, he was amazing. He kind of sent everything down and gave me a bunch of plans and, and, and stuff to work off. So I, I took those parts and went out to uh, a, f a friend of mine's workshop, uh, Adam Cole, who oh, yeah. uh, Cole started Clark. Cole Clark Guitars yes. and it was like one of the head luthiers at Maiden for a long while. Um, and he, uh, yeah, I, I basically kind of got, took the train out to Lilydale, like, uh, you know, once or twice a week and, um, and just like kind of just, just chipped away at it really. Like I did it myself under, under Adam's guidance, but, um, and having, having done it myself and having not done anything like this before, mm. there are, um, there are, um, many cosmetic flaws that I, that I, I, I I would like to uh, have rectified at some point. And how? But, and so you showed it to Brian. Yeah. So what did, what did he think actually about? through through Greg? I got to meet Brian about four years ago, yeah. and he, uh, which was a, a, quite a nerve wracking, yes. no, actually a nerve wracking experience until I met him, and he was like one of the loveliest guys. Oh, you, like, that's awesome. Yeah. It's so got, great when that happens, when you it's, have a hero. They say it. don't meet your heroes, yeah. but it's not always the case. But um, I'd spent 10 minutes with him and forgot that I was talking to Brian May until well, I remembered that I was talking to Brian May and didn't. And so I thought, great. okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you be now. Thank you for your time and I'm going to get out of here. And he goes, no, no, please stay. Um, would you like a glass of wine? And so, <laughs> okay, Brian That's May, great. that sounds great. Thanks, Brian May. <laughs> So, so Brian uh, May is pouring you a glass of wine. Yes, that yes. Sounds kind of like a dream. So I, um, I brought my brought my guitar along because um, Greg had um, kindly worded him up and um, about you know about me having built this and uh, so Brian's sitting there noodling away on my guitar <laughs> and so it's quite a surreal moment having Brian May sitting there noodle on the Brian May guitar that I that I <laughs> built fantastic. because I love Brian May. Did he like it? He, he I think he was just being I think he was being polite and he goes, oh yes please it's a place just like mine and so <laughs> my, my my uh, ex-girlfriend who was there with me is like, who was aware how how nervous I was um, said to him um, well if it's just like yours, well, why don't you give him yours and then he, you, you can have this one. So, uh, she, was, she was escorted out by security. And <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she broke the ice. Lock. That's cool. That's amazing. Now, you have brought uh, another famous looking guitar in. Yeah. Uh, a Rosewood Telly. That's right. And it is 50 years uh, since the Beatles. Since their the rooftop Beatles gig. rooftop concert. And I saw you doing some sort of rooftop thing the other day. Yeah. Not stalking to assassinate someone, but playing in a band. <laughs> <laughs> That's normally what we do on rooftops, but um, doing Get Back. So this is uh, a George Harrison signature. Yeah. It's is it a custom um, shop? It's a, it's, I think, uh, I'm not sure if it's a custom shop, but it was, I think, uh, when they reissued, when they did the George Harrison tribute model, maybe two or three years ago, right. they built, I think they built a thousand of these and a hundred of, which was the super high end custom shop. Yeah. Um, well, unfortunately, I didn't have a spare 13 or 14 grand lying around for that one. Yeah. So I got the next best thing. That's and pretty um, cool. I might, I'll switch cameras yeah. and we'll have a look at this. That's very cool. I had a feel of this before. It's quite light. It's, yeah, so it's chambered. I, uh, I mean, Rosewood. Signature. You were saying the Japanese ones. Japanese ones, solid. Yeah. Solid Rosewood, yeah. I mean, so, it looks exactly the same. Yeah. But, um, but go. They, you look, know, they look great. Don't aesthetically, they? It's, oh. just, it's something that I always wanted to, to tick off. So I, I feel like that. I'm Ronnie Wood now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ronnie Wood has yeah, the, or, or Eddie Van Halen. Yep, yep. But, um, it has quite oh, a, cool. like, a sharp kind of 
bright kind of sound. But can you do? Do you know the solo to uh, "Let It Be" or anything like that? Uh, whoa! Look, what, do, what solo is it? Maybe. Uh, what about "Dig a Pony"? Oh, "Dig a Pony" would be good. Yes. Um, It's, yeah. That's a very, it's such a George Harrison solo, like those big bends, and then you'll play a six. And that, yeah, and that yeah, peak, yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. Uh, ordinarily, it's like, I think it's like, as a. So, it, yeah. yeah, what's yeah. the most idiosyncratic note out of a seventh chord you could pick to play? Like you play the seventh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, it's great. But it's that, yeah. yeah. It's just one of those. I love his solos and the solo to something and the let it be. And yeah. yeah, I love it. So and his, like, I mean, that's why for me, like, in terms of the guitar players that I love, like, I, I, I mean, maybe Brian May is the exception to the rule because he's like technically incredible. But yes. most of my favourite guitar players aren't, you know, the 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 usual kind yeah, of Steve like, Vai type shrimp. exactly yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah and f- there's only so much of that you can listen to I think well yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I start to I start to miss um what's it called um the oh the song that's mm, right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um yeah for me it's like guitar players like George and um you know Dave Edmonds is, a, is yeah, another great guitar yeah, player yeah. and like uh, again like XTC, the two guitar players, oh, and man. like right. Andy Partridge and Dave Gregory from XTC. Are, yeah, uh, it's so. I mean, it's, I think yeah. I guess like a lot of the guitar players I love are guitar players that played um, constructed parts yeah. rather yeah. than just kind of like aimlessly kind of yeah know. noodling away. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, my question on the, or the George Harrison solos. Uh, is did he write those solos himself or did Paul McCartney or something force him to do it? Because sometimes when you watch that old Let It Be movie, oh, you can yeah, see yeah, them, yeah. you know, There's, at yeah. each other's throats. You know, I'll play anything you want me to play or I won't play at all if you don't want me to play. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, That's a good accent. I reckon there's, yeah, there are, like you were saying, there are certain kind of trademarks to George Harrison solos yes. that could yeah. only have come from him. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I mean, look, McCartney was no slouch as a guitar player no, either. I mean, no, he played the solo with Tax and Man. And you've met him too. I did, yeah. Is there anyone you haven't met, Dave? Uh, no, no, well, <laughs> no, yeah. a lot of A lot of uh, your heroes. What was it like meeting Paul McCartney? Um, when you talk about surreal experiences, mm. that's, there was a, that was kind of up there. Um, Ro- Ross, that was here last week, uh, weekend, uh, yeah. had he was on the show. He he's met Paul McCartney, and he said it was like he felt like he was talking to his brother or something because he knew so much about him and whatever. But of course, he doesn't know you at all. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Really, well, it's that, a wacky that's experience. the thing. It's it's a, it's an odd feeling meeting someone like that whose face and you know voice and mm. personality has been familiar to you all your life, pretty yes. much. But you you've you you don't know them. You're not yeah. like it's a, so it's a pretty like bizarre experience. But um, I was introduced to him because I uh, I got um, a, a meeting organised through it was through Uncle Jimmy Barnes. Yes, he Jimmy. um he called me and he was like, "You're the biggest Beatles fan that I know." So like you know. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort it out. You're gonna meet Paul McCartney. I was like, oh uh, shit! All right, thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> so um, he organised that, and then um, yeah, I, like they must have worded Paul up that there was some, you know, fucking geeky guitar player. Who want, you know, he won't take up much of your time. Yeah. But like, yeah. so I'm kind of nervously waiting in outside his dressing room, and out he walks. I'm like, fuck, that's Paul McCartney. Holy yeah. shit! So, like, Davey, this is Paul. This is the last tour, wasn't it? That's right. December, yeah, of not last year, the year before. And um, it's like, Davey, this is Paul. 
no shit. Paul, this is Davy, and he goes, hello, Davy, nice, nice to meet you. I've heard all about you. I said, oh, well, whatever you heard about me, it's, it's all lies. And he goes, no, but this is the thing, right? Most of what I heard about you is bad stuff. <laughs> That's excellent. That razor, oh, yeah, razor yeah, Liverpool yeah, uh, yeah, scouser yeah, wit. Yeah, yeah, well, he's obviously a very, very smart man. Yeah, and, uh, well, I'd, yeah, it wouldn't have been like, and, you know, there's a bit of kind of, idle chit chat about this and that but um and then i got a photo with him and yeah um but he was lovely and i just thought it kind of he started talking to his tour manager or his P- pa about something and okay well now's my time to get out while i'm you know yeah like costanza get out on <laughs> on top so i said thank you so much for your time i'm going to get out of here and it goes it was okay nice to meet you and so like, have a great show and he goes yeah, you know what? I think I will. <laughs> so I turned away and walk, walked off, and so that's I fantastic. can't ask for any more from that yeah, experience. Yeah, that's, that's about as good as it gets. And, and you saw the show? Ah, oh, amazing! Yeah, amazing yeah. Show. I didn't yeah. go. So yeah, it. You know, I think just to. And it's funny, like people go, oh, you know, his voice isn't what it was, and it's like, well, no shit, it's not what it was. He's seventy-six yeah. years old, yeah, yeah. and he's singing. Songs like Helter Skelter that he sang when he was like 24, 25 years old. Mm. And, um, you know, I defy anyone to be able to sing Helter Skelter at the age of 76. Oh, absolutely. But, the band's, um, he the band's does, great as well. The band, the band really good, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, they're, they're both, I saw both shows in Melbourne and that was, was a pretty special experience. Mm. Yeah. Well, while we're talking about Beatles, Dave, Mm. Let me just have a look at our recording. Eh, it seems to be still going. Uh, I have a new segment here yeah. called, and I haven't got uh, any musical ding-dang to do, but Panda will just wave it in. There we go. Uh, <laughs> it's called Out of Ten. Right. And I thought the theme for today yep. uh, would be Beatles albums. Beatles Ooh, albums. Ooh, okay. Yep, yep. One being the lowest and ten being the highest. Mm. Davy Lane, Out of Ten, Beatles albums. Uh, so I'll chuck a few at you. Yeah. And tell me what you think. Okay. Uh, Let It Be. Let It Be is not one that I would rank the highest. Uh, I mean, you know, it's still, it's the fucking Beatles still, isn't it? It is. But it's not as, I mean, you you could kind of tell from watching the Let It Be movie that they're kind of like, there's a, there's a lethargy to it that they're not like, you know, they're, they're, they're sitting in this fucking film studio and like, you know, there's that John Lennon quote where he's like, you know, we're sitting in this, in this film studio from like nine in the morning or something. It's like, who wants to make rock and roll at nine in the morning? It's like, <laughs> which is a fair point. And it's, it's, some of it sounds like they're making rock and roll at nine in the morning in a cold film studio. So I would probably, uh, after, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not one for, for, for keeping things succinct. Sorry. Um, but I would go, uh, I'll probably, uh, maybe seven. Seven? Okay. Revolver. Oh. That is consistently in the all-time top ten albums, yeah. that one. But Look, if we're talking Revolver, that's probably, I mean, that, that that's, that's that's a ten. Like fuck. Um, yeah. That record is just. I mean, that for me is like their like. People put Pepper up as the peak of their creativity, but I think Revolver is like when everything like Rubber Soul. You could kind of tell that things were starting to change, but Revolver is when like that's that's when the acid really kicked in. So. <laughs> All came together. Uh, yeah. Abbey Road. Abbey Road would be, for me, I mean, that's almost a 10, but it has um, Maxwell Silver Hammer and Octopus's Garden on it, which are fine, Yeah. but they're kind of more novelty kind of songs. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I would... Some nice Travis picking on Octopus's Garden. Uh, absolutely. If you want to learn yeah. Travis, picking, Travis picking, is that the... That's it. Right. Yeah. Um, After Merle Travis. Ah, right. There you go. I've, I've learnt something today. I think he learnt uh, 
Uh, they learned that technique from maybe from Donovan. Donovan, Donovan that's in, right, in, in India. India um, so I would probably put Abbey Road as a like eight and a half or nine. Okay. Last one, Help, which mm. seems to be more a John Lennon record, I think, from my memory. That's yeah, that's that's fair to say. Um, what McCartney songs are on that? Another girl. Yeah, he's got a couple. But it seems, like, it's like a chunk of Lennon songs. Well, there's Yesterday's on that, but um, yeah. yeah. Actually, one of my favourites on Help is It's Only Love, which is on side two. Oh, yeah. um, that's, and that's a Lennon song. I get how and I see you go yeah. by. Um, it's a great tune. Uh, help, I, I, help I Love. I'm trying to think of what duds there are on Help, but... You know, when you think of duds, like people would ordinarily go for whatever the Ringo track is, but mm. Ringo's track is Act Naturally, uh, which is yeah. quite a fun rendition. So their duds are usually still still pretty cool. Exactly, yeah. yeah. They never really did it. They never really unmasked or anything. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Although I, I like Shandy, but so. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Track. So. Okay. Well, thank you for playing that, David. No worries. Oh, I haven't, oh, I haven't, I haven't ranked. I haven't, uh, I haven't ranked yes. it yet. I'm oh, probably an eight. I reckon. An eight. Okay. Cool. Yep. So pretty high. Now, David, solo career. Ooh. Let's look at it. Is, is it is, is it a career or is it just like a, <laughs> a bottomless pit that I throw money into? <laughs> That's like everybody's solo career <laughs> okay. in Australia, I think. Um, you got a couple of singles out at the moment. Yeah. Uh, biggest star. Yeah, that's the last thing I put out. Can yeah. you show me, because um, I was listening to that, and yep. nerd out a bit. Yeah. Uh, it, it starts with kind of a riff in E major, yeah. but then it goes into E minor. Was that like in the a chorus, conscious thing yeah. to do? No, no. I, I, I think the, um, the, the, the riff for that is yeah. two different riffs. Um, um, if I can remember them. Let's get a bit of that lovely pitch shift chorus going on here. Um, That's cool. I was going to ask you the, how you got that effect because it sounds great. Yeah. There it is. I think the, the, the pedal that I used on that was a, um, a Strymon Deco with the, like, the tape um, artificial oh, double yeah, tracking yeah. thing. So it okay, wasn't okay. this particular one, but I think I did use the POG on it. Um, and the, the, the riff in the intro is... Um, uh, uh, oh, that's right. And, cool. and the second time around, just to, just to uh, try and... I, I always like, you know, just kind of making things sound just a little awkward yes so uh, oh. so it's so a semitone <laughs> lower yeah throw throw, throw a little bit of a throw that's cool i like throwing flat fifths into yeah, things yeah, just yeah. to just to go oh what was that, that and didn't... when and uh when you get to the this the second verse or the chorus uh yeah where, um, where does it go to yeah the chords in that? i think it's something like that So that's it's cool. It's yeah. So that's where I guess like the 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 minor kind of it's it's yeah. more of a minor kind of chorus. What are, what are the chords that go through that section though? Um, so um, straight after the opening riff, and then it goes into a series of chords. It, yeah, kind yeah. Of like a, I think that they're ascending a little bit. That they it? are. Yeah, yeah. So so this is where that kind of like um, the the parallels with like your Tame Impala yes. thing comes from, and yeah. yeah where the, your Todd Rundgren chords, slash chords. The slash chords. So, um, yeah, the chords in the verse are a, it's an E with an A bass. Okay, yeah. Um, and then a B, uh, B7 sus4. Yeah, that's right. Um, 
it's a real Beatles thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Play that, and then you drop the pinky back to the seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot, so. Um, and then the so it goes yeah, E with an A bass, B seven sus four, yeah. and then like the first chord, it goes up, but it's a G with a C bass. Oh wow, that's great. And then an A with an F sharp bass, which is pretty much an F sharp major seven, um, minor seven. And then it goes back to the C, but just a natural C chord. Yeah. So it goes. That's cool. I love and that chord progression. Yeah, it's it's kind of odd but like it's it doesn't make sense but it kind of when it's all in its it place sounds it sounds killer where, where did you record that i recorded that in my old garage oh really yeah oh, i um using, what uh, what were you using to record it what system uh i i did it on uh well i did it on pro tools but yeah. i i would have used um I record with the, I've got a Universal Audio Apollo, yeah. which has got eight ends. So recorded the drums, I think I recorded the drums, I mean, I, the drums on the actual recording were, are, are the demo drums, so I just... I, who's playing drums? Uh, I, I did. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Ah, did you play everything on that recording? Yeah, yeah. Wow, amazing. Apart from the brass, um, I had... Um, Liam McGorry and Ross Beaton from Sasquatch play yeah. on on that, but um, uh, yeah. Apart from that, I, I I played, I wrote the theme tune and sung the theme tune. Um, <laughs> what's that from? Is that from Little Britain or something? Um, yeah. So the drums and uh, used to yeah UA Apollo. Um, and the, the miking on the drums, pretty. Like, I think it was pretty slapdash because I was just trying, Sounds trying to get an though. idea. I love the sound of that recording. It's pretty. Yeah, I can't. I, I mean, I look. I guess across the board with anything that I record for myself, I like. I like it to be pretty like gritty and in the red. So. Yep. Yep. And in terms of sounds and like synth sounds and guitar sounds, especially on that track, it's everything's like really kind of. You know, there's a lot of pitch shifting going on. Everything's kind of pretty woozy and warbly sounding. So, yep, yep. you know, I like that kind of old, lot like, warped VHS yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's cool. Sound. I mean, I love the sound of that single, and I love the record. Oh, um, thank you. It kind of just, it sounds modern with with sort of uh, tributes back Cube to doff of the yeah. doffs of the cap <laughs> to, a, right. to a bygone era. Yeah, yep. and and I listened to the one. Before that, although I think it said it was released in the same year, but you know uh, that was interesting because I could hear like some seventies Alice Cooper meets some oh, right. Brit pop meets Oasis. So yep, yep, yep. It was really interesting. I love it. I mean, it's yeah. You know. I mean, like with anything I do, I mean, I, I'm, I guess like I'm such a fan of the music that I love. I, I'm. There are always going to be little. You know, like influences like yeah. seeping into any anything that I do because, yeah. um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'd love to be able to sit there and write a song that sounds doesn't sound like anything else. But like, but who can, you know who can do that? Ro it's, rock and it's rock and roll. Yeah. Like really, like yeah. You know, it's, after the Beatles, um, somebody. Oh, it's still distinctly you though. It's yeah. It's, well, I guess you know. It's yeah. It's all. It's all. Yeah. You know throw it into the pot and mix it around yeah, and it comes yeah. out sounding something like yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, think it sounds, I think it sounds unique. It sounds uniquely Australian to me. Oh, that's cool. I, I think with all the tributes, but um, it does. You know, oh, it just that's, sounds, that's cool. Uh, that's... Yeah, yeah you, and uh, you know, I, I mentioned Tame Impala a little bit, but mm. they sound uniquely Australian to me they as do. well. They do, yeah, so, absolutely, um, yeah. So I love that record. Panda and I give it a 10. Oh my you God. How about that? Wow. Where can where can we get it? Um, you can get it on all the um, all the usual streaming platforms, and you is can. Is it in get, the shops? It's in the shops. So that's I'm gonna burn it's out bright. I'm gonna burn out bright. And what was the one? Th there was another one that came out the same year. Yeah, uh, the sort of '60s cover. 
Um, Looked like a Herb Albert cover, you know. Oh. The whipped cream type era. Yeah, era. I'm trying to think which one. I did put a record out um, uh, a couple of years previous to that called um, Atonally Young. So that uh, was, they're, they're the only two albums that I've done, but I'm doing another one this year. Um, so, but yeah. Um, but they're the only two full length records that I've done but I've, I've recorded a few EPs go of, get them go get them now, wherever you can get Davey, them Davey I think we need to get you back for a part two at some stage yeah there's so many other things I want to talk about sure uh, but Panda needs to eat Wagyu beef <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're a little you're hungry, hungry aren't you um, so let's do some gig promotion sure you are at the SB at the moment I'm at the SB that Finish. No, 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 I've got one more week, one uh, more. next Wednesday, yeah. I'll be at the ESPY. Same spot downstairs there. That's right, in the that's in the cool. basement there. I That's the first time, so I went and checked out Davey last night, he was playing a beautiful gold top Les Paul, um, and that's the first time I've been back to the ESPY in years, since, since it's changed. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, you can take children there now and yeah, feel very safe with them. Y- yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No more sticky carpet. And yeah. uh, what uh, what other tours and things have you got coming up? Um, I've uh, I have. What am I doing coming up? Uh, end of February, I'm doing a couple of shows with Robin Hitchcock. Okay. Who uh, uh, is? If you don't know Robin Hitchcock, he's a an English singer songwriter. Uh, he lives in Nashville now, but he started making records in the kind of mid to late seventies and. Um, he had a band called the Soft Boys. Oh yes. Um, yes. And then has made a, a myriad of his own records, which are really great, and kind of has they're f- firmly rooted in the um, in that kind of Sid Barrett, Sid Barrett-y kind of pastoral That's psychedelia cool. kind of thing, which is I think in the promo uh, picture I sent out for this interview. Yeah. Uh, you look a lot like Sid Barrett. Oh, right. In that, in that shot. Well, funny you mention that. So if I, that in fact is is Sid Barrett there. Wow. Yeah. Sid if Barrett. you look at, there's a video clip for a uh, um, song called Astronomy Domini off the okay. first Pink Floyd album. Right. And he's um, he has got this like, kind of like, uh, flared kind of sleeves and. All right. It's, oh, it's extremely kind of, yeah. psychedelic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's the image that's projected onto the back screen. And right. the first time I saw that, it's like, I want that. I want that. I want that one. I, want I that. love the... Uh, I don't know if I'm uh, as far out as Andy Partridge views on Pink Floyd because he always says, um, uh, I don't want any Pink Floyd after Sid After Sid Barrett. Yeah, it's right. got to be yeah, the original, well, but... I'm yeah. not quite that staunch about no, it. No, yeah, no, no I, 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 there are bits and I mean, yeah, Gilmore's I, another huge. When oh, I talk yeah. about guitar players who, who, whose parts are beautifully constructed, yeah. then he's like, oh, you know, it's amazing. He's yeah. selling all his guitars at the moment too. I know, know. in the Black Strat too. I'm surprised that he's selling that. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah, I don't I'll, know what I'll, that will sell for, but yeah, I would shudder to think. Yeah. Incredible. Well, uh, David, a customary handshake to you, sir. Thank you very much. We would love to have you back at some stage. I would There's love so to come back. Talk about maybe get you in for a drink beer show or something like that. Do twist, uh, twist my arm. Mm, do an XTC special or something. Yep. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to us and uh, go see Davey. He's uh, at the ESPY next week, next Wednesday, and yeah. all over the place. And yeah, with all UMI over the show. or Jimmy Barnes or. And he's a very nice chap. Go say hello. Yes. Oh, uh, 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 me. No, I'm, I'm horrible. <laughs> <laughs> all right. God. <Cut. Yeah. laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, See you soon. <laughs>